everybody. Um, I'm Jonathan Schmur. I'm a consultant at GNSI. And I will present you PIF, which is a data flow processing framework. By data flow, we mean uh, data mining, transforming, reporting, and all that. So, uh, basically, what is data flow programming? Let's take it back in the history in the 70s. Uh, um, again, named John Paul Robinson, who has wrote a book named Data Flow Processing, uh, has worked with many, many, many lines of data in both applications. Um, at that time, there wasn't a lot to do with so much data. So he invented a, a new way of data learning where you have to, to be processing items one at a time. You have blocks for processes and you have one data going from each block one, one by one. Um, um, basically, we adapt the items from one block to, to another. Uh, so, in the theory, all the blocks, which are also named components, form a network with links between them. Uh, components have input and output ports, and, and, uh, and the network is managed by a scheduler, because at that time it was only processes. Each box was a process with sockets between the boxes. And the scheduler was, was verifying if every item was being processed, if every process was still alive, and so on. And data was sent as standard information packets. Here, uh, nowadays, it would be maybe JSON objects, dictionaries, and things like that. So, but we are using Python. We are not using COBOL or whatever. So, in Python, we have generators. Uh, in generators, uh, executions uh, get resumed with you each time you have a new item. Uh, is everybody knowing well Python generators? Yes? Okay. Uh, so, what if we try to use that for data flow programming? Uh, let's imagine we have one generator which goes like I print, I continue on the number, then yield our name, our number, and, uh, and our other answer. Is here, of course, 42. We get this iterator, we print our first iteration, we see that, we see that the, the first iteration uh, the code uh, has been resumed, we have I continue zero, and we get our dictionary. Uh, then we iterate through, through the data and, and we see that every time we print, then the value, print, then the value, the execution gets resumed. Just like a coroutine. So, to use generators for data flow programming, we will do what we call chaining. We will get an iterator, we will pass it to another generator, which will adapt it and return another iterator, and so on. Here we have an example of not having a producer, an adapter, and a consumer. The producer doesn't take any variable. Uh, here, here our producer is just on its launch. It, it, it's an iterator uh, over numbers here from 0 to 5. We adapt the flow yielding from that a dictionary with the value on its double. Then we, we, we put this iterator in a consumer. Our consumer prints the double on, on yield true for saying, OK, it's so good. I, I did everything with the data. You don't need it anymore. If it had been yielded for, uh, false, it would have been, OK, I had a problem. So here we see that when we run this, we have I received zero, zero got, got printed by our consumer, and the consumer gave it true. 
we have all this so far. Right now, it may seem really simple. It does not add a, a lot to how we program. But if we see it, it will answer. Uh, so, j just a, a few words to recall. Blocks are named components, and in the process, they make a network. Each component has input and output ports. The network is, ma is managed here using generators. We call that lazy data flow programming. And the construct data can be either standard Python objects, no need for special information packets, or information packets which are like a dictionary whose item can be accessed as a tribute in our case. Um, and information packets are only needed if you want to send items over the network for, uh, for parallel processing of your pipe. So, what are the benefits of using lazy flow programming? When the usage is kept low, you have only one, one item which gets through every part of your process. In, in some easy to learn uh, programmation paradigm because you always come on only one block and what you do is iterate over the line on using something or not or whatever. Then all Python objects can be used. There is no there is no need for spreads and it's just standard than Python compared to other short solutions which are using stateless Python. Um, if you need to, to scale, just as for multiprocessing, the framework has it and it's really simple. So, if in a few words, we are at it, if the development framework and environment for data flow programming is based on ZFlow, which is a library which permits to have input and output ports in the engineering generators. Uh, the pip.dataflow pip namespace is a friendly fork of ZFlow, uh, and, and also it has, just like Python, much more than those basics, it's batteries powered, meaning you have a lot of plugins. So, let's have a look at this architecture. Up there, we won't start by the, the, by the down. You have P data flow core, which is, like I said, um, ports on generators. You have the components, which are like a standard library of really low-level components. Components which will permit to split or join a flow or things like that. Then you have a network manager, which will build a network with the wires, given a graph, you, you will tell it using a simple dictionary. And then you have the PIF componentized uh, uh, way, which is an XML which describes exactly your network with plugins and maybe code inside. And there will be three kinds of plugins, adapters, producers, and consumers. Uh, plugins are, uh, are just places embedding a big data flow component. Um, on top of that, you have big services which permits to schedule your processes to have even plugs on your processes, to launch processes using data descriptors, if you need that data entry directly inside with data descriptors. For example, you can say this is a CSV, for each line you will have one object, uh, first column is this attribute, so on the same for XML, flat file, or whatever. And of course, on the services, you also have a designing part with a REST API on the, on the JavaScript API where you can just do that drag and drop to create your network. So, our, our plugin system has already a lot of existing plugins and you can also contribute that plugin to start to use our system. For extraction, for example, a web extractor to, to extract XML on, uh, on, for example, HTML. Uh, to extract from, from SQL key object, uh, to adapt data, to do summarizing, uh, add attribute get, getters on items. You also have writers to do CSV, PDF using OpenOffice templates, whatever. Um, 
Python code can be inserted directly in your process. You just drag and drop, put, put your own code, and it will work. No need to worry about ports or whatever if you are at this level. And a lot of other tools, like I said, <coughs> scaling, even plug, layering for, for, for example, business units, if you are in a corporate environment, and things like that. Okay, so let's have it. Uh, tomorrow for the training, we, uh, we will see exactly how to use the visual designer and you will even create your own processes. I will just show you now some screenshots. screenshots. We go on the interface on the tube part. We can drag and drop, for example, a producer code on the canvas. We write some code, for example, for a producer, uh, for index number. We can use new user objects. Here is a, just an example, but you can have your own code or plugin. And another term is here that the summary on group lines by account code. Just plain Python code you use the lighter things. You also have plugins to do filtering on the branches, to do summarizing. Here, here is a summarizer. That just leaves one item in the flow of the, of the objects, which is only one item with the total amount of the average amount that goes to the line. You can do drag and drop to link uh, steps together here, and you have also, as I say, something to, to check to, to say this block will go to a separate process using multi processing. Here is an example of, of, of a very simple tube. We just extract data. In one branch, it will do something uh, to only some items to verify a filter. Same with the other branch. Uh, adding attributes and uh, no, just outputting a CSV. You can have things more complex like this one, which does a splitting, then a merge. On one part, you have customer. On the other part, you, you have the invoices of this customer uh, uh, here, where we join. We have one object, which is a customer, with its invoice line. So even if it's not the same data source, you can merge items if you order them in the good way. That's why we are doing, of course, uh, using on this cache if necessary. Uh, and here we are, we are outputting a PDF uh, using RMA, but not your sort of kind of this um, PDF output on the CSV. So, uh, thank, thank you for listening to me. And uh, on training is tomorrow at 14.30, so 2 p.m. For more information, you have our website, which is peaceproject.org, the peace channel on eic.freedom.net. You can go also on the Google Goods, and I, and I will let some business cards available here on the desk if you need. Uh, I would also like to thank sponsors uh, of PIF, which is PIF Consulting Innovation Group, which is basically a business consulting company and my company, GMSI. Uh, so, last info for people who will come to the training. Uh, it's tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. at Pizza Napoli. Please have, if you have Linux, Python Dev, Linux 72 Dev, Linux SLT Dev installed on your, on your distribution. Uh, have you installed your talent? If, if you know what is it, it is something that needs to have a separate Python non your size, non your system on, to, to not interfere. Um, if you come, because the application isn't that good here, to, to, to preload those PIF in a new year around using easy install, you use U, Z, PIF, and in brackets, full stack, because you could also install a minimal PIF or componentized PIF if you didn't want the graphical designer. Thank you, and if you have any questions. So then is Linux only or Mac and PCs as well? Sorry? Well, then it's only on Mac and PCs as well. Oh, Mac and PCs, whatever, or runs on Python. Okay, we just the Linux in there. You did this, you did this, you did this. Because under Windows, there are some pre
compact binaries on the type I and for Linux, for example, for the, for for LXML, you need to have the, the development leaders in your distro. That, that's why I say that. Thank you very much.